Hello, so today we're going to be working with my least favourite gas um, that I've ever dealt with, and that's ammonia. I hate the smell, I hate dealing with it, it's just a bit of a shit. What we're going to be doing is making an ammonia solution, and it's kind of already been done in a sense, like a lot of people have done this kind of technique, and uh, I'm not doing anything particularly new, but um, I thought I'd make the video for a couple of reasons. First of all, if I have to suffer, you have to suffer. Um, so if I have to do something I don't like doing, then you have to watch it. Um, but also, because the gas is actually quite a bit of a shit to deal with. I've uh, gone overboard with trying to make it nice to deal with and I wanted to uh, show you what I've been doing and hopefully if it's a lot nicer then then maybe um, you might think about doing this instead of uh, the standard technique. Anyway, let's get to it. The aquarium pump, this is actually stop the sunlight getting on it because it's like 35 degrees and very sunny and, and black plastic it was starting to heat up quite a lot. Anyway, so the problem with ammonia because it's so soluble in water, what happens is instead of the gas flowing nicely through the tubes, actually the water likes dissolving it so much that the water tends to go back through the tubing system. So even though you're making heaps of gas, nothing comes out the other end, the water actually goes back the other way and you think, this is breaking physics. But And stuff like chlorine doesn't tend to do that. You know, if you make chlorine, it bubbles through and if you stop making it, then it, you know, just the bubble stop. But it happens so readily with ammonia and I hate it. And it can be quite hard to smoothly generate the gas and then what happens is you create a whole lot of gas and then nothing and a whole lot of gas and nothing and because when you create a whole lot of gas it bubbles through nicely but then when you do nothing all of a sudden the water sucks back really quickly. And it can be a really quick process like it's bubbling and all of a sudden it just stops and the gas goes like water goes and just fills this full and if you're heating this flask and you suck that cold water into it you know it, it can be a big danger but quite often it's just an experiment ruiner you know it just just all the stuff all the ammonia solution you've been trying to deal with or whatever you're bubbling ammonia through just gets lost into you know a middle flask and whatever no Jesus Christ no all that time, all that work. So my thought is, what if we had a constant stream of air getting pumped into the system through the aquarium pump? So we've actually got two one-way valves as well. So we've got a one-way valve here in front of the pump. We've also got a one-way valve here. So the ammonia gas will get generated here. The air will flow through. So we'll have a constant stream of air, but that air will also pick up a lot of the ammonia and then force it through the system. So that way we can't really have suck back because we have a constant flow of air through the system. We'll see how effective it actually is. Um, let's turn the pump on. I've also got an air stone in here. Is the air stone overkill? Yes. I mean, the ammonia is so soluble in water, we really don't need an air stone. But I thought if we can make it work with an air stone and ammonia, it can work anywhere. So really just making an extra challenge for myself, but oh well. Right, the pump's on, nothing's coming through because this is open, but when we shut this, yeah. And we have control over the gas flow rate through this pump here, and we can turn it up a lot. I'm not sure how stable the joints are with this flow rate, but I don't know whether they want to burst at this flow rate. I think they might want to, so hopefully we c it works all in the lowest flow rate setting. It's a bit of tape and shit because uh, this tubing size is actually quite a bit smaller than this tubing size. Woo! That scared the shit out of me. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't do that often. It wouldn't really be an extraction and eye video without heaps of Teflon tape and heaps of electrical tape holding everything together. So, you know, I gotta keep on theme with the channel, you know. So I've got an arbitrary amount of the ammonium sulfate down here. It's just some random amount and I've got some concentration of sodium hydroxide. It's fairly concentrated, um, but you know, I didn't bother to work out any stoichiometry. It'll be fine. Um, I don't need any particular concentration of ammonia. And we should be able to put most of it to full concentration anyway. So we don't really have to worry about too much about numbers or anything like that. This is going to be really bad in a second. I'm sorry. What, what do you mean? It's going to smell real bad, probably. No yeah, just usual chemistry. Mm. All right, should be good to go. I think the air's coming through nicely. Should be okay. Okay. 
All right, it's not producing heaps of ammonia gas, and that's probably because I didn't make that uh, sodium hydroxide solution strong enough. So uh, to compensate that, I'm just going to heat the solution, drive off a lot of the ammonia from you know what gets dissolved in solution. All right, so I doubled the uh, concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution I'm adding, and that's helped a lot. You can see with each uh, drip, we get a whole lot of ammonia generated. Yeah, see there? Yeah, so that's, that's doing a lot better now. The uh, sodium hydroxide concentration should be quite high for this to work well. Understandable. It's a little bit hard to see, but with each drop, you can kind of feel the, see the uh, bubbling pick up a little bit. All right, all the hydroxide's been added, so it's pretty much done, I think. It's hard to tell the exact concentration of the ammonia at the end there, but it surely must be done, pretty much. Well, I'm not gonna add any more hydroxide, so I'll just let it uh, cool down. All right, so the solution smells pretty bad, but just to demonstrate on camera, we can grab a tiny bit of the solution here, put it on some pH paper. Okay, if we actually grab some solution, dip it in properly, and then put it on the pH paper. Yeah, very basic, as we'd expect the ammonia solution to be. All right, this bottle looks okay. What did I have in it? Dichloromethane, 2014. Oh, not bad. Um, yep, so I'll chuck that solution in here. All right, I've just kept 100 mils out uh, for some experiments that I want to do just now. But here we are. It's so a concentrated ammonia solution. Awful stuff. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been a very quick video. I assume I haven't edited it yet, but I assume it's a very quick video. Um, but that was pretty painless. I did, did the pump help? I think the pump helped. But it was harder to tell an endpoint because usually what you can see with the ammonia, if it's bubbling through nicely, like the bubbles will, will dissolve really easily, but then when it gets saturated, you see the bubbles coming up to the surface. But of course, with the air blowing through, you can't see that transition happen at all. So, you know, uh, it was okay, and I would have liked the fittings to be a bit nicer. Um, the tape wasn't very good, but you know, once again, usual thing from my videos. It worked well, and we didn't have any horrible suck back. So I think using an aquarium pump has merit. I think it helped. Yeah, alright. Anyway, see you around for another video.